Sometimes users enter data in Excel on multiple lines in a single cell, either by hitting the Alt Enter keys or using the Character 10 function, which inserts a line break. That creates a setup that cannot be sorted, filtered, or analyzed with a pivot table and pivot chart. I am Nabil Murad. In this tutorial, I show you how to fix a data set that is not machine friendly by using Power Query and convert this improper list into a normalized table where each record is in a separate row so that you can use it for creating pivot tables and pivot charts. We have a lot to learn, so let's get started. Here is my start file. You can download the exercise file and follow along by clicking on the link below this video. In this worksheet, I have a table showing a category, an item, and an amount. Because multiple products belong to the same category, then all the product names were entered in one single cell, but on multiple lines, either by hitting Alt-Enter or by using the Character 10 function. Same applies to the amount column. Instead of having each record consisting of a category, an item and an amount in a separate row, I have a single row for each category, and I end up by having 6 records instead of 27. There is no way to analyze this data set by sorting, filtering, creating pivot table, or even visualizing it unless I transform it to a normalized table by using Power Query. If I want to identify the problem in Excel before taking my table into Power Query, I can use the Find command to locate every occurrence of the Alt Enter, which creates a new line in the same cell. And to do that, I'm going to click on the Find and Select, and select Find, or simply hit the shortcut Control F, in the dialog box, how do I type Alt Enter? I use a very special shortcut for this character, which is Control J. When I type Control J, nothing seems to appear in the box, but it's there, and I'm going to show it to you. I'm going to click on Find All, and look what happens. The Find command was able to locate every occurrence of the Alt Enter, and it lists them here. So I want to select them all. So I hit Ctrl A and I was able to locate them all in the cell. I don't need this dialog box anymore. I'm going to close it. I was just diagnosing the problem. So I hit the close command for the find dialog box and I want to take my table to Power Query. To do that, I click on the data tab of the ribbon and to the left side of the data tab, you might see the command from table range, but because I'm using Microsoft 365, then the name changed recently to from sheet. The functionality of from sheet or from table range in our example is exactly the same. Just to keep you informed, the from sheet enables sending a spill dynamic array into Power Query. We don't have this situation, then I click on from sheet and that will fire up my query editor. The query had the same name like my table, Alt Enter, and I want to start by trying an option, which is very popular in Power Query, which is splitting cells. So if I select the item column, and I have great hopes that this tool will work, if I click on split column, and then I select by delimiter, it might be able to recognize the kind of delimiter I have, which is a line break. Then I click on delimiter, and sure enough, the split column by delimiter dialog box opens, and it identifies it with this code it shows there is a custom delimiter and this is the one. If it doesn't do that, then I'm going to delete it and show you how to split at every occurrence of Alt Enter or Line Break. Then I go down to Advanced. If it's collapsed, then you can expand it. And then you check the box for split using special characters and under special character, look what happens here at the top when I select Line Feed. It puts the same exact character. I want to split at every occurrence of the line feed or line break, and I want to split into rows, and the moment I hit OK, look at that, it solved my problem, 
Then I have the first product, croissant for the bakery category, English muffin for the bakery category, white bread for the bakery category, and then we switch to another category and so on. Then it worked just fine for the item. If I look at the lower left corner, I see that I have 27 rows and that's wonderful. What happens if I do the same exact thing to fix the amount column? I'll bump into an unpleasant surprise. So I select the amount column, click on split, click on by delimiter. It identifies the delimiter for me. I'm going to split into multiple rows and I'll accept the default. But before clicking OK, I'm going to select this part, which looks like a number sign and if, but it's not. It was confusing me for a while. Then I'm going to copy it, Control C, because I'll use it later. I hit OK and here is the problem. For each one of the numbers, I have repeated category and item. Although the correct thing is bakery croissant the first number, while when you select the English muffin, bakery English muffin, that's the second number. So I have the combination of the category and item being repeated for each one of the numbers, which doesn't return the correct number of records. It doesn't return the correct combination. And I end up by having 123 rows. Then I'm going to delete all the steps starting from change type. I select change type and right click and select delete until end. Instead of deleting them one by one, I hit delete. I will be fixing this issue by using a Power Query function. And to create the Power Query function, I click on Add Column, click on Custom Column. The Custom Column dialog box opens. I give a name to my new column, let's say Item Rows. And the Power Query function is text.split. So I type split, and then I scroll down to find the function text.split and that I open bracket, what would you like to split? I would like to split the item column, and then I type a comma, and I want to split it at a delimiter, at a separator, so I type double quote, and in between, I'll be pasting the symbol that I copied. This symbol confused me for some time. I was thinking it's a number sign, and in bracket, it's an if, while actually it's lowercase l, lowercase f, and then after the closing quotation, I close the bracket, and then when I hit OK, a new column is created. It shows list for every record. When I click to the right side of the word list, all the products appearing in one single cell will appear on separate rows. If I look at the preview in the lower left corner, then each product is in a separate row, and that's wonderful. I want to do the same exact thing for the amount column. I go to Add Column, click on Custom Column. Let's call this one Amount Rows. I'll be using the same exact function text.split. I open bracket, select the Amount Column, and then Comma. In double quote, I'll be pasting the symbol. And then after the closing quotation, I close the bracket for the text dot split and then I hit OK. Same exact situation when I click to the right side of the list, then all the numbers, all the amounts in one single cell appeared now in separate rows. My next step will be combining each row from the item rows to each corresponding row in the amount rows. I'll be combining these two lists in a table. Then I'll be creating another custom column. Click on Add Column. Click on Custom Column. The Power Query function I'll be using is Table from Columns. I start typing from columns to shrink the list, and then I select it by hitting Tab. I open bracket. What are these columns you want to use for building your table? I want the item rows and the amount rows. I need to provide them in curly brackets. Then I type an opening curly bracket and then a closing curly bracket. And in between, I'll be providing the two columns. I double click on item rows and then I type a comma, double click on amount rows. After the curly bracket, don't forget to close the bracket for the table from columns. And now let's check. When I hit OK, a new column is created where I see table repeated for each row.
Now, if I click to the right side of table, I get exactly what I'm looking for, a product and the corresponding amount, a product and the corresponding amount, and that's wonderful. I would like to rename the columns within the function. Of course, I could do that when I expand the column, but I'm going to do it within the Power Query function. Then to do that, I click on the gear icon of the Added column under Applied Steps. It opens the Custom Column dialog box before the closing bracket of the table dot from columns. I click, I type a comma, and the next argument will be the column name, but I have to type it in curly brackets in double quotes. So I open a curly bracket in double quote, I'll be typing product and then a comma in double quotes, I'll be typing the name of the second column. Let's name it revenue. Close the curly bracket and we already closed the bracket for the table dot column. I have a check mark, which means my function is fine. Then when I hit OK, if I click to the right side of the word table, now I get a nice table. It has a column header, product, and revenue. Now we are ready to expand this column. Before I do, I need to select the column that I don't need anymore, the original column item. I press Shift and click on Amount Rows. I don't want this column, so I right-click and select Remove Columns. Now I click on the double side pointing arrow to expand. When I click here, I don't want to use original column name as prefix, so I take the check away and then I hit OK and that's wonderful. I have a column for the category, a column for the product, a column for the revenue. The total number of records is 27, which is correct. The only problem I have, because in the original list, we use the Alt Enter or the character 10, then these numbers are not perceived as numbers, they are perceived as text, and I want to fix this, which is very easy in Power Query. I select the category column, press Shift, and I will let Power Query do the heavy lifting for me. I click on the Transform tab, I click on Detect Data Type, and that is fixed, and that's perfect. Then let's send this data back to Excel. I click on the Home tab, and I click on Close and Load to send it to a new worksheet. And here is my normalized data set with 27 rows of data. In each record, I see the category, the product, and the corresponding price. I have 27 rows loaded. I'm going to close the queries and connections, and I want to analyze my data by creating a pivot table, a slicer, and a pivot chart. So I select a single cell, I go to the Insert tab of the ribbon, and then I click on Pivot Table. If you don't know how to create a pivot table, format it, change the layout, I encourage you to watch my complete course about pivot tables. If you want to enrich your knowledge even more, you can read my book, Pivot Tables from Data to Dashboard. I'm going to create my pivot table in the existing worksheet. I hit OK. The pivot table feed list opens. I'm going to drag the product to the rows. I'm going to drag the revenue to the values. I also want to insert a slicer and then I'll be formatting both of them. I click on insert slicer and for the slicer, I want a slicer for the category and then I hit OK. I created my pivot table and slicer. I can resize my slicer and split it into six rows corresponding to the six categories we have. Now I want to create a pivot chart. I'll be using the shortcut Alt F1. And here is my pivot chart. I want to select two categories, let's say the canned products, and then I press Control and click on Rice. I want to take a moment to format my pivot table, format my slicer, and format my pivot chart, and I'll be back. I finished formatting my pivot table, my slicer, and my pivot chart. And I want to show you that we started from a totally improper data set that has a problem. And we fixed that problem in Power Query. And now we have a normalized data set that we can sort by product, we can sort by category, we can filter in any way we want. And we visualized our data by creating a pivot table and a pivot chart. Everything is dynamic and controlled by Slicer. If you enjoyed this training video, give it a thumbs up. And make sure you subscribe to my channel, so you don't miss new tutorials when they become available. The best is yet to come. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.